So this is my solar array, well half of it at least. Uh, this is the east side of the roof and on the opposite side of the ridge there is the west side and it's exactly the same as this set of panels here um, but mirror imaged. But I'm, I'm thinking I can probably fit a few more panels in particular what about this little space here on the roof? And of course there's the uh, uh, other side of the roof which has exactly the same shape but in the mirror image. So yeah, maybe that would work. But let's see. So some of you may have seen me use the online tool Heatpunk which is designed to do heat loss calculations for your house and it's by the guys who run Midsummer Wholesale. And as it turns out, they've also got another online tool called EasyPV which is designed for designing uh, solar arrays and uh, battery and inverter systems. And uh, it's basically a, a tool like um, several other uh, online tools that you can use for this sort of purpose. Uh, it's designed specifically for uh, professional installers, but there is um, a, uh, an account that you can just sign up to use for free and uh, yeah, just get going um, basically. So that's what I did. Um, I signed up and I uh, started tinkering. So this is not going to be a tutorial, by the way, of how to use EasyPV. There are plenty of other tutorials by the guys who made the tool online, so I'll link to those in the description. Um, what I am going to show you, though, is the final result and uh, the conclusions that it led me to. So I spent a while designing our house and also our neighbor's house in the tool, um, along with adding a couple of uh, trees because uh, those are important uh, for shading and other things that I'm going to show you later. Um, but this is what I came up with. This is more or less a uh, reasonably accurate representation of our of our current system. So you can see we've got our east facing uh, panels there and our west facing on this side here. And you can see they um, pretty much fill those two uh, pieces of roof. And uh, what I thought was, well, it looks to me like uh, these little triangles here to the south um, would be useful areas that I could potentially put some panels on. Uh, so this is exactly the sort of tool that enables you to um, design that sort of system to see whether or not you can actually fit what you want on, on, into the space provided because it's all good and well looking at your house and thinking, yeah, it looks like I could fit maybe three or four panels on there. But in reality, uh, looks can be deceptive and unless you sort of design something properly um, you know, in 3D, uh, you can be misled. So what I did was I, uh, I took uh, my design for the house, which uh, took a little bit of fiddling. I've got to admit there were some slightly awkward uh, um, tools in the design phase, but uh, that's probably just because I'm unfamiliar with the with the tool set. I, I expect you get a lot better at it and a lot quicker at it if you uh, if you practice. But um, yeah, it took me a, little, a while to get this set up. Um, I annoyingly the only panels you can select are the ones that Midsummer Wholesale themselves actually sell. I wasn't able to find the exact panels that uh, we have on our system, but I did find ones that were approximately the right size. Basically, I found the panels that we do have found what dimensions they were, and then I found the closest dimensions to allow me to fit them into the space. Um, and I think it's pretty accurate to uh, compared to what I see on my actual roof, you know, the amount of margin around the air, um, around the edge of the, the panels here, for example, and, uh, you know, how, how much space there is um, along this right-hand side, for example. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. And uh, from there, I decided to start adding panels to these two uh, little pieces of south facing um, roof to see whether or not I could fit what I wanted to. And this was the rather underwhelming result. So I thought I was absolutely convinced that I would be able to fit at least three panels on each one of these uh, south facing triangles here. But when I got down to actually doing um, the design part of the process, I discovered that there's only really enough space for two at most. Um, you can see that really if I wanted to add a third one it's going to basically disappear uh, behind uh, the wall, uh, behind this other piece of roof here. So really I can only add two um, on each side, so only four panels in total for the, for the whole of that south facing uh, portion of the, um, of the roof there. Um, and that was a bit disappointing. I was hoping I'd be able to get six at least, which would have at least been worthwhile. Um, but then I was thinking, well actually, okay, fine. Uh, maybe there's not really much point in adding uh, south facing panels because the hassle of getting just four panels installed and on a particularly awkward part of the roof I would need um, a scaffolding both sides and then just all that scaffolding for just two panels on each side uh, didn't seem really worth uh, worth the trouble so I thought well I do have a north facing roof so I thought well I'll put a load of I'll, I'll put a load of panels on the north facing roof here uh, just to see see how many I could fit on and I reckoned I could fit at least well, about 18 panels of about the same size as the ones I've already got. 
uh, and that would actually be you know a good a good chunk of uh, generation there um, and uh, maybe that's worthwhile as well um, but um, it would mean basically adding scaffolding down this side of the house which is actually quite a narrow alleyway there's another house to the side uh, this side here um, which would make getting to this um, roof extremely awkward and I thought well also I can see this roof in the winter gets covered in in sort of um, you know green uh, a smear of green lichen or something um, so it's obviously in the shade a good chunk of the year and it's going to get um, going to get really dirty I think the, the, these panels would probably uh, get covered in lichen as well and maybe wouldn't necessarily um, clean particularly well when it rained or whatever so uh, that I thought well is that's you know that's a lot of panels and it wouldn't necessarily generate that much uh, throughout the year given the number of panels because obviously it's north facing so would that be worth it either um, and my conclusion was yeah probably not either um, you know, neither the south nor the north facing uh, uh, parts of the roof would be would be worth adding panels to. So then I got thinking, well, actually, no, there is a third option as it happens. And that's um, over here on the west side where we've got um, a, a big patio door. So this is actually here designed to represent a, an awning over our very large uh, patio doors that uh, cover a good fraction of the of the rear of our house. Um, so you know, ignore the fact that this is a box here. This is just a, a part of the um, of the design tools that uh, allowed me to just stick this sort of extra awning over the side. So this is representative of, of the awning rather than it being looking exactly like it would look in real life. And I reckoned I could fit five panels lengthways, which would give us a really nice awning, effectively, you know, a fixed awning over our patio, which would be really nice. However, there's an obvious problem with that, and that's that it's clearly shaded uh, by the house for at least half of the day. Um, and also then it's shaded by these very large trees in the evening. So in fact, let me um, click this button here, and this will take me to a different uh, view where um, you can actually change the time of day and the um, the day of the year to see what effect the shading has. So if I pan it round to this point here and I can use this really neat tool down in the bottom right hand corner where I can grab this little sun symbol and just move it around basically. So we've got uh, the morning over this side and the evening over this side and then we've got January up the top going down through to December at the bottom. So going through the summer in the middle. So this was this would be midsummer on at uh, midday and if I zoom in a little bit and just pan it across slightly. Uh, you can see what happens with the shading. So in the winter, you can see it's essentially uh, in shade for most of the day. You get a little bit of sun uh, on that west uh, facing awning from about midday onwards, and then it starts getting shaded by, by these trees here. Uh, and in fact, the same pattern more or less happens all the way through the year. So we get um, shading, 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 a little bit of sun for maybe a couple of hours, and then the shade of the trees just takes over and, uh, and covers the, the panels. So there's really only, let's see, this sort of region here over on the right hand side of this plot where we would get any reasonable generation. So, uh, you know, if this was completely unshaded from these trees, that might actually be the best option because it's, it's five panels. They'd be dead easy to install, wouldn't need any big scaffolding or anything. And uh, you know they could just I could hook those up with microinverters say um, straight into the AC so I wouldn't need any additional um, stuff in the garage it would just well apart from the uh, let's say uh, an end phase control box in the garage so that wouldn't take up much space um, but yeah that would that was my sort of prime primary um, thinking was that this would be the best option except for the fact that these these trees completely destroy any uh, potential benefit from that west facing roof and as and also while I'm here since I've got this shading tool open you can see that the uh, the north facing roof is basically in dark in darkness for a good fraction of the year it's only in the height of summer when the sun's really high that it gets a, a good amount of generation through the day but um, you know let's not uh, let's not take my word for it and uh, let's let's uh, actually Decide, let's work out whether or not um, any of these three options would be worthwhile. Um, but I should also mention actually that this uh, west facing awning was basically vetoed by CAT. So, you know, that's out of the running anyway. But just for the sake of argument, let's see what the theoretically what these three arrays would generate 
without any shading at all, um, just you know, given their orientation, um, you know, south, north, or west, using the PVGIS tool, which I've used uh, already for our existing array to, to tell me what we should expect to generate each month. So this is the Photovoltaic Geographical Information System, otherwise known as PVGIS, and I, this is the tool I used to get the estimated generation for our, for our existing system. Um, so what, all you do basically is you plonk a, plonk a marker down uh, on your house, uh, you tell it what the peak um, output of your uh, array is, so 6.8 for us. Um, the slope, actually 35 is about right for ours. Um, the azimuth, and for us we've got a minus 90 degrees which would be um, the uh, east facing array and then 90 degrees for the west facing array. Zero degrees would be perfectly south facing. Then you click visualize results and you get a lovely chart like this and you can then spit out the data in a CSV file and uh, basically that's what I did for um, the all four of the of the um, different roof components for our house, the, uh, the, the existing east and west, the new bit of south, the new bit of north, and the um, hypothetical west-facing face, awning. And I compiled all that together into a nice uh, spreadsheet chart view. And this is that chart. You can see the existing uh, combined east-west array that we have is the blue shaded area. And then I've added on uh, the new south-facing array, the new north-facing array, and the new west-facing awning in red, yellow, and green bars, respectively. And in addition to that, what I've also done is in brackets um, with the names here, I've put the total expected annual generation in kilowatt hours uh, for those uh, different systems. So our existing system, uh, we uh, are expected gener to generate somewhere in the region of 5.2 um, megawatt hours during the year. And we uh, currently generate about 70% of all of our consumption needs. Um, so we actually consume approximately 7.5 uh, megawatt hours, which we, means we're missing 30% uh, uh, if I was to um, aim for um, to be a sort of a, a completely net zero uh, uh, solar generator uh, to completely meet our, our annual need, then I would need another 30% um, generation. But I do also have a small ripple investment of 959 kilowatt hours per year, which hopefully will come online as soon as the, uh, the new solar park uh, is finished, which uh, I think it might be later this year, possibly early next year, not, not entirely sure. Um, but when that comes online, um, that'll um, obviously offset uh, a good chunk of the remainder. Um, that's about 13% of, of, uh, of our annual consumption. So that still leaves about 17% uh, that we're missing, that we're, that we're um, in deficit, which is about 1,300 uh, kilowatt hours for the year. Now, if you look at these numbers up here, you can see that, that those four south-facing panels could potentially generate 1,600 uh, kilowatt hours, which is slightly more than we would need to, to break even. However, that doesn't account for um, any shading from the peak of the of the roof, um, which would uh, obviously, you know, um, cause some uh, reduction in in the in the output of the of that those particular uh, panels. And I can demonstrate that back on this chart, where if I pan over to uh, the early morning, you can see that these uh, these panels over here are slightly shaded by the ridge of the house, and in the um, evening. The panels over on the east side of the house are also slightly shaded so I don't think um, we could uh, expect to, gener to generate the full 1600 uh, kilowatt hours for the year from those four panels but I reckon we might hit the 1300 that we need so that might be sufficient so theoretically those four panels might give us uh, roughly what we need to break even for the year. Now, interestingly, the north-facing panels, there are a lot of them, admittedly. There are, you know, 18 panels, which is the same number of panels as we've got in our combined system already. But that, in total, would could, could potentially generate nearly 3,500 uh, kilowatt hours for the year. And you can see that's almost completely dominated by the, the middle three months of the summer, um, because obviously the sun doesn't really uh, fully hit those panels until, until the summer. Uh, the rest of the time, you're more or less just getting ambient light from, uh, you know, from the sky, and uh, you know, in in the winter, you you get very little additional generation. So it's uh, completely dominated by those summer months. And finally, the west-facing awning would also generate a similar amount, in fact, to the uh, the four south-facing panels. There are obviously five panels in the west-facing awning compared to four in the south-facing array, but it generates a similar amount, 1600, 1700 kilowatt hours uh, for the year. However, as I showed um, using the shading. Uh, 
analysis. Uh, I don't think I would get anywhere near 1600 kilowatt hours for the, from that array. I think it would be more like half of that or even less because they'd be in shade almost all of the time. There's only a couple of hours a day when they'd actually be you know, in, in full sun. So I reckon that I'm, I'd be lucky to get a thousand kilowatt hours from, from the west facing awning. So if we were to go for that, hypothetically, even if CAT would allow it, uh, I don't think we would generate enough to cover the, the sort of best part of 1300 kilowatt hour deficit that we've currently got. So where does that leave me with my plan of adding extra generation to our house? Well, I don't think any of these uh, three potential places for extra solar panels are, are really going to work out for me. Um, I think adding these four south facing um, panels would be um, a huge amount of extra hassle for not much benefit and you know just four, four panels really wouldn't cut it. The west facing array would be much easier to install. Cat um, has basically vetoed it so that's not going to be any good and it's completely shaded uh, in the afternoon uh, so there's not really um, much point to that. And the north facing array well it's, it's very big it would give us what we need but um, I think that would be too expensive to install honestly for the benefit that it would provide. Uh, in terms of install cost, well, I mean, we're still talking several thousand pounds even for a, for a relatively small array just because of the, the extra um, scaffolding that's required. This would be the cheapest, the west facing one almost certainly, no expensive scaffolding, only five panels. Uh, this north facing array I think would be very expensive. It would probably be the best part of eight to ten thousand pounds to install So that is that really can't justify its existence um, given that it's north facing and it really wouldn't generate enough And then of course I have the additional complication of uh, any extra generation I add um, Would need approval by the DNO and we're already at a five kilowatt um, export limit uh, so adding additional um, panels would mean that I'd probably need to extend that to maybe six or even seven kilowatts and I'm not sure whether they'd go for that or not and if they refuse that that would require an additional G9, G100 application which is um, you know there's another fee associated with that so you know all of that um, just means that it's, it's probably it's more complicated more hassle and probably more expense than I'm willing to uh, to, to put up with so what am I thinking what am I thinking now well there is still the option of potentially some roof mounted uh, wind that has its own issues I'm probably going to cover that in a completely separate video um, but other than that maybe extending the ripple investment that's an option um, and failing that there are actually other options that uh, uh, involve uh, investing in additional um, sort of off-site uh, solar generation or, or other gener micro generation like that and that's something I would also like to explore so I'm going to cover all of that in a future video um, but for now I think my uh, experiment with um, uh, Easy PV has at least demonstrated to me that uh, adding extra solar panels um, to our house is probably a non-starter but it was well worth uh, you know mucking about with the tool just to see how it works and, uh, and it means that what I'm going to do now is uh, demonstrate to my neighbours who are living over here in this house here uh, I, I'm going to essentially build uh, the, the equivalent system on their house on I think they've got a lovely nice south facing roof here that they can use um, just to see uh, what they think about that and uh, and maybe that will encourage them to, to invest in some solar um, so we shall see that may, be, may, may well turn into another video at some point in the future um, but that's it for now thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you in the next one